Greetings once again, Shinobi. Dudes this then back again with Boruto to Blue Vortex. Where previously, after Code and the Claw Grimm's attack on Konoha, the village hidden in the league, it was Sarada who had gotten up close and personal with a lot of the situation going on. Explaining it in a meeting between Kawaki and Shikamaru, she explained that the Claw Grimm, since they are parts of the Ten Tail, act very much like the Divine Tree, trying to find someone they can absorb in order to create chakra fruit, but unless it's a Natsutsuki, it won't work, meaning that their primary objective is to absorb beings such as Kawaki, Code, or Boruto. Speaking of which, when Boruto confronts Code at the holding center of the Tentail, trying to convince him to undo what he's done to the Clawgram, enter humanoid divine trees taking on human appearances with massive amounts of power. This is what Boruto was worried about, as it seems like in certain cases, the Clawgrim have taken on the appearance of particular people and are hunting down Boruto, all in an effort to create the chakra fruit. And while Boruto undoes what he did with the Kuzohiko to Code in order to have him help him out, Code, knowing that the divine beings are after Boruto, decides, hey, this is what I wanted after all, not caring that it may very well come at the expense of his own life. So Boruto had no choice but to escape from these divine tree beings, returning to where Sasuke was encased in a divine tree. Running out of options, what is Boruto's next move, especially considering that Sarada is trying her best to propose to Shikamaru and Kawaki cooperating with Boruto. I see he seems to be the only one with any real knowledge about what is going on. What'll happen next? Join me as I find out, won't you? Alright, Boruto, Two Blue Vortex, Chapter 5, Target. A very standard looking picture of Sasuke. I love the faint imagery of a tree in the background. Everyone thought Sasuke was gonna die, but nope. He's been treed. Okay, so we're picking up during the training of Boruto by Sasuke. Sasuke learning the ways of the blade. We see a somewhat older, but not quite at where he currently is at Boruto. Training with some straw dummies. Sasuke watches and then walks away saying, That good, that's enough for now. Time for a break. Night falls and Sasuke and Boruto sit by a campfire. As Boruto smiles and says, Oh man, Sa I mean, master, what do you think about my Ochiha style? Fully mastered it now, right? Sasuke pauses then says, True, this past year I suppose I've taught you almost all the moves and methods I know. <laughs> it's one of those, I've taught you everything you know, but not everything I know. Boruto questions, huh? Oh, master, that's a rough joke. I was just messing around. There's still a lot you can teach me. Sasuke turns to him saying, does this face look like it's joking? Boruto says, nope, not at all. Come to think of it, I've never heard you crack a joke, master. Sasuke tells him, you've g got talent and you're a quick learner, what they call a genius. All the th theoretical stuff is in your head already, no? And I have nothing left to teach you. Boruto questions him again and Sasuke explains, but make no mistake, it's not like you're done training. Don't slack off, keep practicing and hone your mind and move for what you make of my teaching will be up to you in the end. That's actually, that's actually a good point altogether. I'm like, yeah, I could teach you as much as need be, but if you don't make it your own, if you don't make it a part of you, then what's the point? It seems like Boruto kind of takes that a bit to heart. I mean, th I like the fact that Boruto is a quick learner has come up once again. As Sasuke and Boruto make their way through the forest, Sasuke tells him, you're a lot like Naruto. You have the same determination in your eyes. You once led me back onto the right path after I had strayed. It no longer matters to me who you really are. I finally think I understand why Sarada asked me to help. Something is going on. Something that only you and Sarada can deal with. That's what my gut is telling me. And that's why I'm m I mentored. Sasuke is the biggest example of age bringing wisdom. Oh, okay. We later cut to the confrontation between Boruto and Sasuke fighting against Code in his claw room, as we see that it was actually Sasuke who cut out Code's eye. Ah, okay. As Code places a hand over his injured eye, he says, Damn it, Uchiha, you... How dare you take my eye? An obviously also injured Sasuke says, What are you doing, Boruto? Hurry up and run. But Boruto tells him, How can you say that, master? I won't abandon you. Sasuke tells him, Oh, it looks like Boruto's sword was cut? 
in half? Weird. I wonder what happened. See, this, this is one of those moments for the anime to really show off what happened in a major clash. Sasuke says, listen closely. There is absolutely no way we can win against him at the present. So escape for now. Survive at all costs and build on all the skills I hammered into you. Then there won't be anyone who will be able to stop you. Sasuke then builds lightning into his blade. And as Boruto watches, Sasuke turns to him saying, watch over Sarade for Boruto. And as Code calls out, die and Boruto calls out to his master. The last thing we see is Sasuke charging into the wave of Clogram against Code. I'm not gonna lie, I feel like there should have been like at least a dozen more. We then cut to later as Boruto returns to the side of the battle and Sasuke encased in a tree, still gripping his sword with several cut down Clogram all around him. As Boruto looks at his master. He then eyes the sword and takes it from Sasuke. As he sheaths it, he says, I've got this, old man uh, stops and then says, I mean, master. Cut to present day. So it was only a year of training. Everything else Boruto learned on his own or through Kashin Koji. We then cut to the leaf village with Konohamaru being told by a ninja, Konohamaru, this way. Konohamaru then finds himself brought to someone encased in a tree, surrounded by Shikadai, Moegi, I mean, I think it is Moegi, Shikadai, Inojin, and Chocho. Kono Konohamaru approaches the trio and says, hey, are all of you okay? He then looks to the figure in the tree and, yeah, it's Moegi. Someone did, I think I remember someone saying that one of the divine tree people looked like Moegi. I guess they were right. <laughs> I don't know how they could tell considering the art because I just was just like, okay, it just looked like the way most of those kind of female appearances look. But yeah, that's straight up Moegi. Dang. So we have one that looks like Sasuke. One that looks like Moegi. I mean, shoot, that's the most important Moegi's probably had in anything ever. But what decides the appearance that some of them take on? Huh. As Konohamaru looks on, Shikadai explains, she was shielding, shielding a mom and kid, they said. Konohamaru calls out to Moegi, looking at his encased friend. Chocho then says, I ain't forgiving him, neither Code nor Tentail. Inojin says, like, duh, same here. Shikadai pauses, not saying anything. While Konohamaru tells him, Moegi isn't dead, you know. I swear we'll find a way to get her back together. Shikadai says, yes, sir. Not as bad as Azuma, but <laughs> it's still a tough blow to lose your teacher. So at least we have some motivation for the new Inishikacho trio to get involved with things. Because it's been hinted, it keeps being hinted that they're gonna, you know, have a big role coming forward. So I guess we'll see how that all works out. Yeah, sure enough. We cut to Moegi's face and then to essentially what her doppelganger is. So, oh, right. We have Bug too. So Sasuke, Moegi, Bug, and this other person who I think someone's mentioned they kind of look like Shinuchiya, which <laughs> I still can't tell in this art style sometimes. It just kind of has an Ada-like face. So we cut to a meeting of the Divine Tree people. The Moegi one, Divine Moegi, says, The Inoshuka Cho children and Sarutobi Konohamaru. I can sense their deep sadness and rage. Huh, so they can even see what I guess their progenitors can see? Or at least feel what's going on around them? That's interesting. Huh. So there's a connection on a deeper level. I wonder if that'll actually come into play in any way. The leader says, it's proof that your awareness is being stimulated. We may be one unit, biologically speaking. But Matsuri. Oh. They have names. I wonder what, how they decided what their names would be. Moegi and Matsuri. Those emotions you are feeling seem to be yours alone. Hmm. They're establishing that they're own, their own, they're their own entity. The leader continues on saying, in short, while we are still a single existence known as the divine tree, we are experiencing an unprecedented state in which we each possess independent consciousness. See, that's how, if you've watched this channel long enough, you know that my opinions on stuff like clones and stuff like that, yeah, you can have the same memories and experiences up to a point, but as you go out into the world, you could have two people who have pretty much the same exact memory, but past a certain point, those memories diverge. It's the same thing with twins. Twins don't always tend to look the same past a certain age because their diets will change, especially once they go out and experience their own things and lives and so on and so forth. You keep them together, they're more to, they're more likely to remain similar. You take them apart to some degree 
and they're gonna end up very different existences, no matter what. That is the essence of a soul. Our memories, our consciousness, our experiences, at least in my opinion. The leader continues on saying, There is no major change to our goal of devouring the Otsutsuki, Boruto, and Kawaki, and evolving into our final form. Moreover, there is one thing I'd like to declare to you right now. Hmm, declare. I don't even know why I feel this way myself. It's an instant instinctual desire. That's why it seems significant. I'm thinking of devouring Uzumaki Naruto. What? They want Naruto? Why? He doesn't have any Otsutsuki in him. So they're even targeting Naruto. Okay, so we're just making sure that everyone's on the same page of wanting to take down these divine beings. We see Ada using her centering gun, naturally to spy on them, because of course, and suddenly she perks up saying, what the? Seriously? It looks like she's at a restaurant with Damon. Or maybe they're just eating in the house they have. Matsuri questions Uzumaki Naruto. Divine Bug says, Why? He ain't an Atsutsuki, right? The leader says, Correct. Have we are already a divine tree and are evolving differently than usual. Thus it appears some change is happening to our instinctual drive as well. The divine Sasuke says nothing. <laughs> Much like he constantly does. I have to wonder, what does he feel about that? Huh. And it also makes me wonder, can Moegi, Bug, and Sasuke feel what their counterparts feel? Like, maybe they're watching things through their counterparts' eye. That's ca That would be kind of cool and creepy. Like a waking dream. So even though they're sealed away, they're still experiencing everything. God, what happens to if those trees that they're sealed in are destroyed? Would that kill them? Can they be destroyed? Sorry, my mind is like going off 50 miles in the opposite direction. Um, the leader says, give in to your instinct. Bend your ear to your inner voice. Do so, and in due time, it should come to you. Your personal target. Oh, man. <laughs> These guys really embraced their evolution. But, I mean, I kind of make sense. There's this, like, weird need. And they're just like, I mean, hey, follow that need. We've ascended, they've, uh, I'm saying we, they've ascended because of those instincts. Maybe continuing to follow those instincts, they'll ascend even further. Huh, why? I don't know, I kind of like where this is going, this is interesting. Ada continues to watch, and Damon <laughs> is trying to call out to her, saying, Hey, big sis, what's the matter? Masuri takes a moment and says, Follow my instinct, eh? Well then, the first one that comes to mind is Sarutobi Konohamaru. I might want to eat him. Mmm, kink. <sighs> instinct says to eat Konohamaru. Okay, first of all, hopefully Konohamaru gets some good action. Because, I mean, in the anime, I've seen a few fights. Konohamaru has some good fights in the anime. Not a lot, but a few. In the manga, <laughs> Konohamaru might as well not be an entity. I mean, <laughs> like, actually thinking about it, how many people actually remember that Konohamaru is supposed to be the teacher of Mitsuki, Sarada, and Boruto? Like, come on. Shoot. He's kind of taken on the role of Aruka to a certain degree, but at least Aruka had more positive impact on Naruto than the way that Konohamaru has had an impact on Boruto. Again, mostly in the manga. Because there are not a lot of times that I think, man, Konohamaru really came through for Boruto in this way. It, 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 Barely comes to mind. But the leader says, Good choice, Matsuri. I can sense your individual identity. I mean, shoot. That's one hell of a boss to be like, Hey, go out. Do what feels right to you. Give in to those base instincts. Go eat a dude. <laughs> the divine Sasuke says, Jura. Okay, so his name's Jura. Interesting. Do we know this guy? He's not actually Shin. Shin's dead. But who did he absorb? Ah, it's weird not knowing. But the Divine Sasuke says, I have just one question. What exact, exactly what are we? That, that's a good point. What are they? Jura takes a moment and says, a reasonable question. But ultimately, it doesn't matter. It's like growing pain, which arises from the manifestation of your ego. Worrying about it is pointless. The Divine Sasuke says nothing. Jura then tells him, what you ought to do is what's important. Your instinct will reveal that to you, who your target is, and that 
Hidari will lead to the formation of your identity. Hidari seems to take this in. Hidari. Huh. I wonder if there's some kind of special meaning to their name. Maybe some kind of twist on the names of who their, I guess, progenitors are or whatever? If I'm even using that word right. Ada continues to listen with her sending gun and she thinks to himself, the chakra of the people who were devoured and turned into trees by the Clawgrim created these guys? Uh, okay, that's kind of creepy. It's almost as if the divine bug noticed Ada watching. Oh, that's freak. Cause he gets up and then walks to where her consciousness is and just goes right up to her, looks her in the eye and says, you're watching, aren't you? He leans in close to her face and says, I've decided my target, you. <laughs> Holy crap, that's actually, <laughs> that is so ominous. Yo, <laughs> I'm sorry, that is ominous as shit. <laughs> I don't know, something about that is so terrifying. Yeah, I, if you had told me that anything associated with Bug would ever be intimidating, I never would have believed you. But dang, that is, I actually got like a slight shiver from that. That is so freaking creepy. Okay, so they were at a restaurant as Ada just, in reality, just drops the drink she had startling daemon <laughs> and i love the crowd of people all looking at ada through the window she just pauses and daemon says hey you okay and she just says ick <laughs> like ew <laughs> ew <laughs> do not want oh to be so popular man <laughs> they gunning for everybody so konohamaru naruto which you think it would have been the sasuke one that wanted naruto but huh Okay, Konohamaru, Naruto, Ada. I wonder who the Sasuke one's gonna go after. I mean, what was the name? Hidari, there you go, Hidari. Hidari, Matsuri, Jura. Hidari, Matsuri, and Jura. God, I really do wonder what the bug one's gonna call himself. Cause I mean, dude's name is just Bug. Oh, okay, they all sensed it. I mean, I guess that actually makes sense. Jura says, the sendering gun, interesting. Hidari then says, Uchiha Sarada. Jura turns, and Hidari tar doubles down saying, my target is Uchiha Sarada. Okay, yeah, there it is. Okay, <sighs> to some degree that makes sense. It all makes sense. Cause, I mean, <laughs> I feel like this is gonna make Sasuke sound some weird kind of way, but the people most important to them, Bug, because of Ada's abilities, would be the most infatuated with Ada. We all know Moegi was really into Konohamaru, so that makes sense. For Sasuke, it's because it's his dog. You know, the most precious thing in his life. Not to say he doesn't love his wife. If you've seen the Sasuke Retsuden story, you know, he deeply loves his wife. But, I mean most precious to him would be his daughter because it is it she is the catalyst of that love you know if you're a parent like the love you feel for a child that 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 that's a next level kind of love because you know that the one you'd want to protect most no matter what would be your child and your spouse would probably feel the same jared turns to himself and says a good choice hmm okay then cut to the research lab where amado and samire are both tapping away at their respective computers still weird to see such advanced looking computers in naruto but then again the amount of time that has passed shoot it's like the 90s to the two 2010s almost literally uh, samire keeps peeking over at amado and amado feeling her burning a friggin' hole in the back of his head says, What is it, Kake? Samira takes a moment and then says, Baruto has returned three years after he fled the village. Amado says, So it appears. I hear you protected Kanoha from Code's surprise attack. Samira continues saying, Yes, but Kanoha is still gunning for his life. Amado takes a drag of his cigarette and says, He killed the village leader. It can't be helped. I mean, you know, thinking about it, it should be weird, the idea of working with Boruto, considering what, what they perceive has happened. But keep in mind, we have a bit of a truce with Orochimaru. <laughs> like, I, they ain't gunning for him, but there is kind of a truce with Orochimaru, despite the fact that he killed the third Hokage. So it's not an unprecedented situation. Sumeria then remembers Amado's words saying, I added Akabe's data to Kawaki's 
reconstructed karma. All Kawaki has to do is implant karma into a new clone body that I'll prepare. That should be enough to revive Akebe. Actually, yeah, knowing that, that would be an easy way of telling who's Boruto and who's Kawaki. Because who does Amado think he implanted that karma into? Huh. Samiri then questions. You're awfully nonchalant about this. Wouldn't it be problematic for you if Boruto were killed? You wanted him back for your daughter, right? Amado tells her. I sprung Boruto out of Kara's clutches with Kashin Koji's help to take Ishiki down. Hmm. Actually, now thinking about it. Who does Kashin Koji think Boruto is? Would he even have any perception of that? Huh. Amado tells her, after Ishiki's death, I embedded my daughter's data when I reconstituted Boruto's dispelled karma. Because karmic resurrection is the only way to restore a human soul exactly as it was. Which is why I need Boruto alive. That's what you're getting at, right Kake? The long pause between the two. And Amado continues saying, in regards to Kawaki, who also has a karma, his body is a scientific ninja tool and yet, no one seems to know who modified him or when, despite him being the Hokage's son. Yeah, oh, oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> I love the intense looks from Sumire. Amado then says, but the truth is, it is clear. I'm the one who made those modifications. Sumire questions, why? How do you know such a thing? Because who do think, how the hell do you think made those kinds of modifications to everyone else? Like, come on. It's so obvious. And, I mean, with all the years that Amado's been here, He's had plenty of time to think about this, as he says, because it couldn't be anyone else. Science that prove it's my handiwork can be found all over him. Exactly. It's a scientist's habit, just like how an artist leaves their mark on a piece they create. Samira listens intently as Amado goes on, saying, it's the same with his karma. I can instantly tell if it's one I reconstructed or not. For some reason, the special karma containing Akabe's data is on Kawaki's palm. <laughs> okay. It's finally happening. More people are putting together the dot. Amado says, These phenomenon completely contradict my memory, but in light of this physical evidence, I must conclude that at least part of my memory has been altered. He pushes a bit back from his desk and tells Samiri, That's the only explanation. Not to mention that memories are no more than ambiguous fa figments of thought. As a scientist, there is no proof stronger than physical evidence. Mm. I don't know who did the tampering, but I can say this much. My only priority is the karma containing Akavi, and it isn't Boruto who possesses it. It's Kawaki. And naturally, <laughs> we see that Amado is currently being monitored most actively by Sai. Sai then can gets in communication with Shikamaru and asks him, what do you think about what they said, Shikamaru? Shikamaru just looks out his office window, thinking. Okay, so I kind of like that maybe Shikamaru knew a lot more than he let on. You know, because look, there's been a lot of slander against Shikamaru because, you know, he doesn't know certain things. But Shikamaru's usually very intelligent. Say what you want, but... When he has all that he needs to know, Shikamaru ain't nobody's fool. Meanwhile, Sumire meets up with Sarada, and having explained everything, Sarada says, You're saying that despite being affected by Omnipotent, Mr. Amado is aware that his memory has been rewritten based on physical evidence? Hmm. We cut to the destroyed family photo of Naruto and Boruto, Hinata and Himawari. Hmm, I wonder why we cut to that. Sarada questions, how can that be? When everyone else still insists that Kawaki is Lord Seventh Son, even when shown a family photo with Boruto in it. Okay. Wow, so even seeing physical evidence, it just doesn't register. That's so odd. This feels like the questions that arose in Spider-Man Far- Far from home, where people are just like, but there should be photographic evidence that Peter Parker exists and that he's Spider-Man. I mean, this is kind of that explanation. It just, it just doesn't register. I wonder if there, shoot, now I'm thinking about the MCU, like, are there any people who just, that it didn't affect? Hmm. Sumire eyes her and says, that's cause they'll believe their memory over any physical evidence. I think most people aren't capable of doubting their own vivid memory. True, sometimes people can tend to believe what their memories tell them, even though 
a lot of situations, their memory isn't right. Sometimes they'll overwrite their own memory. What we remember isn't always how things actually happen. Not to a T, anyway. Samira then says, yeah, normally. Sarah then thinks to her, please, to her dad to help Boruto. And she says, but my dad still. And suddenly enter Boruto, right behind the two of them saying, old man Sasuke, or rather, Master Sasuke believed in me. While still doubting his memory, he risked his life to save mine. Samire and Sarada turn to Boruto as he says, For you, Sarada. My guess is that they've met together multiple times before and Sarada's known what happened to Sasuke for a while. Cause she runs in and embraces him hard as Samire watches. And while at first Boruto is hesitant to put her ar his arms around her, she says, You're late, stupid Boruto. And finally he embraces her saying, Sorry, I'm home now. This was a lot of setup but at the same time it's set up that we really needed like those little bit of explanations i love that boruto made sure that sarada knew that the one he the one sasuke cared about the most up until the end was his daughter he he put it all on the line for his daughter any goddamn day of the week and you know that's right i'm still <sighs> It feels so weird because it's like Sakura's nowhere to be seen in any of this. And it's like, okay, what is Sakura thinking in all of this? What's her mindset about what's going on with her daughter and her husband? Because it's weird not getting that perspective. Like, did the Boruto series forget Sa Sarada Sa uh, Sakura was a thing? I'm going through all the S names. Like a parent who's forgetting which child they're calling out to. I've been there too. Um, but it was good to see that despite everything, Sasuke showed a lot of care to Boruto. Even when he didn't have to. Because his, you know, Sasuke's daughter made him, you know, come to the understanding that he needed to help this person. So he did. That's a special kind of beautiful. I hope with Matsuri targeting Konohamaru, Konohamaru gets a lot more play. With all the targets, it's gonna be interesting to see how this all shakes out. I wonder, see, I hope that with this, Shikamaru understands that, okay, the real person, the real situation going on is not what we perceive it to be. And if there's anyone who should be able to get to that understanding, it's Shikamaru. I will be so disappointed if, given everything he's heard from Amado in secret, gotta love ninjas actually doing ninja stuff, which is surveillance, but Shikamaru needs to understand. The real problem is Kawaki. Will he understand that the Clawgrim, these divine beings, are the real problem. Like, they're the most immediate threat, and they're products of the Atsutsuki, so... But I see him being stubborn. I see him being stubborn. But because they're hunting Naruto, they'll be hunting Kawaki too. Not just because he's an Otsutsuki, but because they want to eat that Naruto. <sighs> There's a lot of fun stuff going on here. You know, the story is interesting. And I like that we've kind of coalesced everything into a much more concrete and clear path. An enemy that seems dangerous and ominous and unknown because they're unknown even to themselves that's the interesting point they don't know what their potential is and we don't know what their potential is because of who they've absorbed because we don't know what it means for them to have absorbed someone how far will that go ultimately but I like where it seems like things are going. Just hope they can execute it properly. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed the ride. And until next time, I've been Deuce Disden. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you later. Till then, bye bye.